Are we filming? <laughs> very good, very cool. Awesome record. Anything else? Nope. Yo, what's up, Bob here? Welcome to the Bob Bradley YouTube channel. As 2023 comes to a close, I thought we'd take a look back at the 10 best vinyl finds of the year. These are not necessarily the most expensive records. They are the ones that I was the most excited to find. And we're going to get into them right now. Early in January, I was in the comic book shop. That's right. The Great Escape. And I saw this record up on the wall. Tony Rice, Church Street Blues. This is an ultimate grail in the bluegrass genre. Tony Rice passed away a few years ago and sent a shockwave through the bluegrass guitar community. Tony, legendary guitarist, possibly the finest guitarist to ever play bluegrass. And this is one of his most beautiful records, Church Street Blues title track. You've probably seen him play it on the instructional videos that he's done that have been on YouTube for many years. And it's just phenomenal. I think this record was about a hundred bucks and worth every penny. I snatched up immediately. It is on that small Sugar Hill label. Great way to start the year. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that early in the year, I picked up a box of blues records, a small collection. A fella who had been collecting blues for quite some time and had pretty much everything, but some of the covers were missing. But there were some that were complete, and here's one of them. Sunhouse Father of Folk Blues on 2i Columbia. We all know this record. It is a super grail for me. I was so excited to find it. Sunhouse, very close to the source when it comes to blues. This is a must have for any blues collector. This is a near mint copy. Just beautiful. Sounds incredible. Another one from the same blues collection. Long time, I mean long time grail record for me. Couldn't find it, couldn't find it. Bam, it was in the box. John Lee Hooker, it serves you right to suffer. On Impulse, incredibly clean. Couldn't believe it was in there. Beautiful sounding record, a very vivid recording. Legendary a boogeyman. John Lee has a style, all his own. You should become familiar with it. About mid-year, I discovered a huge metal, punk, and psych collection down at the Electric Ladyland head shop. We'll just call it that. I just rolled up on an insane record collection. I can't get everything. There's far too much here. Lots of crazy thrash metal, but I got a lot of stuff. Yeah, and as I was going through the crates, the diggers before me had missed this little gem. Slint, tweeze, sob on the cover. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, iconic cover. Louisville local band done good. Slint on the Jennifer Hartman label, right? Rather expensive record. If there's any place you're gonna find it, it's here in Louisville and bam, I lucked out and found this one. Custom slint labels labeled Gerber and Bemis. Yes, very cool, very clean. All the inserts out of that same collection. I pulled a record like my third trip there. I, this record was sitting still in the crates. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe I passed it up twice. Fear debut record, super clean. <laughs> On slash, this is a smoking badass record absolutely fantastic they got it right the first time fear this is probably their finest work and a fantastic record beautiful fine fifteen dollars is what i paid for that we're going to get into the better day stuff these all came out of jazz boxes that ben brought on record store day wahoo duke pearson kind of a first come first serve situation pulled this Blue Note from Duke Pearson. Wahoo, yeah. Beautiful 
beautiful bop record. Duke Pearson just killing on this. Blue Note, New York label, just absolutely excellent condition. VG++. This was a big hit for me. I really love this record and couldn't believe I found it. Out of that same box, there was a couple blue notes in there. And I snagged this one right away. Lee Morgan's The Rump Roller. Yeah, this is a legendary record from Lee Morgan. We all know this record. Probably many of us have. I have the classic series version of this record. And I was super happy to get this original on the New York label. Just a beautiful sounding record. It's not every day you find two mono blue notes in the wild. And I was stoked to find this one. Unbelievable find. My year was going well. I showed this record a few weeks ago. This is a recent score from Record Store Day Black Friday. The the Ahmad Jamal tapes may or may not be gone. You all know what I'm about to show you. Ahmad Jamal, The Awakening, iconic cover, spiritual jazz, piano trio, absolutely fantastic record. I've been hunting for this for many years and it finally came home on that later 70s Impulse label. Excellent condition, just fantastic. Speaking of spiritual jazz, one of the more sought after records that I've been looking for, I was told up front, this Alice Coltrane record is in the box. You're gonna have to pay up for it. <laughs> So I believe I paid a hundred bucks for this and um, definitely worth it. Alice Coltrane, Journey in Sashwandia. That's how we're going to say it. I don't know how it's said. I'm just going to go with it. Uh, Sacha, Sacha Jawanda. Hmm, Sacha Jawanda. I'm, my, maybe that. I don't know. But we all know this record. It was reissued. Pretty decent reissue. But it is always nice to have a super clean original on Impulse. Legendary record. Beautiful, beautiful Alice Coltrane. Farrell Sanders. You know the deal. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. It's staying right here. And finally, the number one find of the year. This record spurred a whole series of videos from me. And <laughs> probably to the detriment of my channel, honestly. You know, I didn't get as many views this year as I would normally get because all summer long, I did a series featuring CTI records. And, you know, that's a very specific thing and it's not everybody's taste, but I wanted to do something fun and something kind of, you know, lighthearted and, and something that focused on records that sound really good. CTI was the answer to that question, but it all started with this record. Freddie Hubbard's Red Clay. Pick this up early on. It's not a crazy hard record to find. It's not even that expensive. I was waiting to actually find the record and I found this incredibly clean copy. And boy, oh boy, is this a funky little operator. It has this iconic cover, green CTI label, near mint. Sounds absolutely phenomenal. Freddie Hubbard's Red Clay, if you get it, opportunity to buy this record you should especially if it's clean it's fantastic who's on it yep joe henderson again herbie hancock ron carter and lenny white on drums it's fantastic these were my top 10 finds of the year i love each and every one of these records possibly some honorable mentions if you want to see some of these records just go back in time and, and check out the videos first promo pressing of Degueo, yeah, from ZZ Top with the promo slip cover and maybe um, some of those original Slayer records from the Metal Collection. Whoo, man, those were real heaters as well. As we collect more and more, the records we are looking for starts to narrow a lot, and I'm definitely at that point. So it gets harder and harder to find anything. I've been out there searching and uh, 
let me tell you, it's very rare that I come home with more than one record. Sometimes I find some cool stuff. Most times I don't. But the search continues. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic New Year's. And thanks for coming along on the ride of 2023. Until we meet again. That's right, folks. Bob out.